Hi, it's Joe from Prep Agent with my friend Ceci, Ceci, Cecilia da Anna Cecilia Dowling. Anna Cecilia Dowling. I'm sorry. It's going to yes. take me a little while. <laughs> I mean, I called you that for so many years. It's going to – just give me, a, give me like a few more times and I'll be good. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> um, okay, so you have some big news. How's it going with the top producer world? I is going great since last time we talked. Um, and you've been holding me accountable somehow. I am pretty excited. Um, I am pursuing opportunities that might be a long shot, but they might become something real. And I am meeting a little bit later with a, an agent from the office. That is this guy that wants to sell his property, but he doesn't want to commit uh, to the listing with me. And I really didn't want to waste my time. But then I thought, I'll talk to this agent that has uh, clients over $2 million. He might be able to fit the criteria for this, uh, this person that wants to sell. And we match it. We are going to be matchmakers. So we'll see. May, hopefully next week I'll tell you we have a signed contract. I don't know. So what's your strategy going forward? Well, I already know the property. I've been at the property. Uh, my strategy is uh, talking to this agent and try to get one of his clients to see the property and bring the listing agreement along with the purchase offer signed. Well, the purchase agreement signed and get the listing agreement signed at the time we meet. That's my. So can I put you on the spot and ask you something? Sure. So one thing we talked about before was as a top producer who does a lot of deals, you rely on referrals and things are going. But the danger of doing that is you get caught up in the moment. And then when things die down, you're like, okay, where's the next deal coming from? Because you're used to right. referrals coming in. So as you have this action going on, putting on offers, getting ready to go, excited, are you also doing something to prepare for when this deal's done? I actually am, as of uh, two days ago, I have a strategy to get clients on the pipeline. Um, and, and that's what it has been my weakness. I didn't have clients in the pipeline. So when I am done with the client A that I'm working with and it's over and done, I didn't have anybody waiting. So now what I'm doing is putting um, clients in for categories. Uh, the first one will be A, that is the clients I'm working with. The B will be clients that might want to do something in a month. The C and D will be clients more than a month. So I'm following this advice from my coach and he's telling me how to follow up with them. So I'm starting to implement that in Hopefully, we're going to have a lot of um, success. I am pretty sure we are because without any system in place, I've been pretty good in what I do. Imagine if I have this going on and kind of for the first time, it's something click. And it is true. We have to have somebody in the pipeline that we can move towards the big clients and then to the A buyers. And that way, you're going to have work all year round because i imagine it's difficult when you're working with an a to remember the d's well no that's what the system will be in place it's a database where i am going to program who's going to be in which category and i am going to schedule touches according to the a b and c is going to be different touches in different times and um, as we move them towards a it will be more often the tachins and being connected with them. And um, just put it this way, last year, last year, I wrote a thank you note to one of my clients that he's amazing. Um, and that client gave me two listings. That, that two listing, eventually I started working with the buyer, so it was three. And now the buyer is selling again, and he's going to buy something else. So the power of being grateful to people that are in your life, it is great. And I'm trying to tap. Let me rephrase it. 
I am going to tap in every single aspect of real estate right now, being grateful to my clients, even though I think might be a long shot, I'm still going to pursue it. Worst case scenario, I'm going to get a no. I already have a no. So I might get a yes. Yes. So that's what I'm, I don't know. I'm pretty excited. Should be. So what do you mean by the touches? Like you mentioned touches with the D's and the A's and the V's and C's. On the C, yeah, the, on the CRM, uh, my database, as I put them on client A, client B, client C, client D, the client A, I'm not going to be touching them by email or phone because I, well, I'm working currently with them. Yeah. So I don't need to be emailing them. So clients B, since they might be ready in a month, I'm going to be touching them per se um, the first week of the month. And the clients uh, C and D might be touching them on the third week of the month constantly. For a year if you wanted to, or as long as you know that they're moving towards being A. So when you say touching, you mean like an email? Well, the CRM has... Uh, the, We'll be emailing them on days that you program. It could be holidays. It could be birthdays. It could be an event, wedding, divorce. Who knows? Um, and then follow, following up after that touch with a phone call. Maybe invite them to have a cup of coffee. That's what is working for me. Meeting my clients face-to-face -face and going for a cup of coffee for lunch that's really working. So, I don't know. I'm excited to incorporate the things that I haven't done before, like having a database with, uh, what, with what is working for me that is being face-to-face -face with my clients. It sounds like, when I hear you, keeping in touch with your clients is the same skills you use to make friends and maintain relationships in your personal life. It is. Imagine if you haven't seen uh, um, your friend in so long, it's better to keep in touch constantly. So you have to remind them five, six, seven times that you are a realtor. They might not remember, even though they're your friends or they're your neighbors. And that's what I learned because um, uh, my neighbor put her home for sale. And I went to see her and I said, did you forget I am a realtor? And she says, you know what? I did. And I was my fault. I should have been in touch. She did let me know she was going to sell in a year or so. And I just didn't do anything about it. I guess the lesson I want people to take from this, the lesson I'm hearing, is people get scared with real estate for many reasons, as you know. But a lot of the skills people have in their personal life in maintaining relationships, maintaining friendships, getting yourself out there, the skills you learn when you're a kid all the way growing up, you could apply to be successful with what you're doing now. Because a lot of what you're saying is, like first thing you said is, do something nice for somebody. Check in, see how they are. You know, say Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday, Happy Hanukkah, whatever their thing is. Say hello to a neighbor. And in that conversation, mention your realtor. But before you mention your realtor, you were simply just saying hello. Yes, absolutely. So, and that's basically it. So you have their best interests uh, and they will have eventually your best interest at heart. What I mean by that is when they hear somebody, oh, my friend is selling, oh, my friend is buying. Oh, you know what? I have a friend. Let me refer you to her. I mean, they will keep you in mind because you are somehow touching them in their life constantly. So, and that's what we need to do. Sometimes it might not work immediately, but sometimes it does. And that's what we need. And if I hear you correctly, you don't need to be like the life of the party. You don't need to be this big outgoing personality, some people think. Sometimes as simple as getting coffee, seeing how you're doing, asking somebody like, oh, how are your kids doing? It just You need to be real. That's what uh, it's like the thing a is, genuine introduction, like a friend, like you really care. Exactly. And if you care about no. other people, the realtor thing works in very smoothly. And you have to really care genuinely, otherwise... They will see through you and you might have a transaction, but not a career. And I want a career. I want them to think of me as a realtor. I've been lucky enough to have people in my life for 10 years. 
They have bought houses, liquor stores, and eventually they refer me friends. I mean, it's nothing better that they trust you and they said, oh, she'll take care of you. Oh, don't worry. I know her. I mean, you can't repay that with anything but being trustworthy. So, so would you say the way to build a good real estate career is just very simply think of others first? Remember the golden rule? Treat others as you want to be treated. Be honest with other people. Have the best interests at heart. They are trusting you with their most precious information, financial information. Don't abuse it. Use it for good, and they will repay. They will be loyal to you. Right, and I love that we're getting at that a touch with somebody is not necessarily a sales pitch. It's a how are you doing, a genuine caring outreach, more or less. Absolutely. Yes, it is. And just at the end, just remind them, hey, remember, I'm still doing real estate. If you hear of somebody, I would love referrals. And it does pay off. They do keep you in mind later on because they're not, okay, she just calling me to ask for business. No, I mean, at the end, you just throw the little thing and say, hey, I'm here. Remember me. So keep me in mind. And it works. It really works. And the funny thing, we talk about online marketing. You're doing exactly that right now. Because right now, you're genuinely offering you know, to help people. You're letting people have insight into your life, what you're doing, which is not easy to do for any of us. It's a <laughs> difficult thing to do. But by you putting yourself out there in the hope that it helps some people, you know, some people are going to see that you're genuine and like it, and it's going to come back to you. That's the hope. But, but yeah. in your mind, when you're doing this, it's not immediately send me a deal for me to do this. Your, your first thought is genuine. All right, there's people who need help. There's people starting out. If I can give a little insight into my life and it helps them, great. And if a referral comes out of it, all the better. But that's not your first thought when you got on this with me. No, no, it's not. And sometimes it's as simple as Burbank offer a program that is the greenhouse program. So where they come and check if you have... Um, proper insulation and if all the doors are sealed completely that's a free thing all you have to do is call Burbank and they will come and check it out even in my place they put I didn't know that I didn't have insulation in the attic they put it for free they gave uh, maintenance to my AC and just by conveying that information to other people they are like oh my gosh I have no idea or sometimes if you are um, underneath the fly path, they will come and replace all your windows with double or triple pane for free. But if you don't know that, you don't know how to take advantage of that. Yes. So by little yes. informing them, telling them what's going on, what they can do to save money, and then eventually they translate into business. So I'm pretty happy right now. I, I will say you have kind of push me and holding me accountable without holding me accountable but in my mind you are I am doing a little things differently as I said today I'm gonna go and try to match this property with this other agent I hope it's gonna be successful and I could tell you all about it next week and uh, we'll see well I hope you do and I just love the message we got out today because it not only worked for you it worked for me when I originally put out these videos on YouTube I mean, I put it out for free because I realized all this stuff is expensive for people. So I put it out for free and it's benefited me tenfold. And I know you're helping people as I convinced you to do this. I said, hey, I have some new agents. A little insight would be good. And you were like, oh, okay. And you came out and did it. So that generosity, I really want to convey to people. But with that being said, if you get a referral, that would be awesome, which I would love people Please. to refer to. So give us your info. So we could have people send it your way if they have something that's applicable. Absolutely. So my phone number is 818-414-2689. And please, I promise your clients will love the service. That I can promise you. Where are you? What city? I am in Burbank, Los Angeles. I go where my clients want to go. Burbank, Glendale, Studio City, Sherman Oaks, San Bali, all the area surrounding, so. Right, and as it, always, I'll put a link to Ceci's information below so you guys can find her there and we'll be good to go. 
So with that being yep. said, um, Ceci, thanks so much. And we'll t- Anna Cecilia Dowling, we will talk again soon. Sound good? We will. And hopefully I'll have great news for next week. Working on a few. So let you know soon. Okay. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.